So, um, part of your certification process, as you're working towards silver, you need a technical certification. That technical certification can be done at the Big Brother Camp, which is here in March. It can be done at the 2020 Camp, which is either here in uh, July, uh, early July, or uh, last year we did it at the University of Wisconsin. This year we'll do it probably at the Spire Academy in Ohio. Um, you basically travel in, it's on your own. Um, you, know, you rely on volunteerism, uh, wrestling. So if you want to get a chance to work with the top juniors in the country, you would travel to Ohio, um, work with us at Spire, you would teach some sessions, um, and uh, that would be your silver technical certification to show that you can teach it on the mat. Do you do positive reinforcement when you coach? Um, you know, what kind of coaching style do you have? We analyze all those things. Uh, and then for gold, part of it is teaching at a silver college. Um, so Brahman is working on that right now, getting things set up for his gold. He's got a list of tasks that he's already sent me that I I have to get on and uh, start checking. Um, and, and the other coaches that are presenting here, similar situation. When Nick is getting ready to do his, he'll be presenting. And then what I like too is, you know, Hag comes in, he's going to present on the mat in a classroom session. And uh, it's a gold certified coach coming in to get back. Long cheer pack last night, gold certified coming back. Uh, and a lot of our guys do that. And I would be remiss if I'm sure I missed some guys uh, as they go through. Um, so, you know, no pressure. He's getting graded on this. It's a pretty tough uh, stringent test. Um, very excited to get a chance to, to have you show today. Um, when we do that, we try to figure out what your areas of expertise are, where you really feel confident, and what you're really looking to do. Develop a program, we check it out, and we go through. Um, what's nice is the more we get a chance to work with coaches, at like the Big Brother Camp, the 2020 Camp, where you volunteer to come in, the more likely you are to get picked for tours, right? Where we're going to pay to send you to Cadet Pan Ams or Junior Worlds, where we'll pick up that tab and we'll sit in the corner coaching those elite teams. Um, and so that's kind of the payback. You kind of help give to us when we need you at those camps, and then that gives you a better chance of getting pulled into those pools um, where you get paid to go around the world and uh, coach our guys. So. Uh, awesome stuff, I'm excited to see this in uh, Brown Creek. Thanks, man. So, just like Coach was saying, I've been working with USA Wrestling for about six years. Um, I've been to several of those camps. I've been to Spire. I've been to, uh, been here to Big Brother. I've been to to the other summer camps. Um, I wrestled for Coach Danny at UNO. I wrestled there for five years. I was a four-time All-American. I was a two-time national champion at UNO. Um, my career record was 151 and 27 at UNO, um, and I've done a lot of study. I love the sport. I study the best guys. I've been I've spent time with Pat Smith. I've spent time with David Taylor. I've spent time with Terry Grant. I've spent time with Coach Slay. I've spent time with <coughs> Coach Zadig. I've spent time with Coach Haggerty. So I really feel like I, uh, I have a grasp of the stance and motion stuff. That's where I'm going to spend most of my time this morning. Um, I'm going to teach you some stuff that you probably go, ah, my kids can't do that, but I'll teach you some stuff that they definitely can do. Coaches love drills. I know as a coach, I love drills. I love drills because drills make skills. So I'm trying to give you a bunch of drills that you can do with your team to improve their football. Okay? I'm really big into moving your feet and getting a motion and, and uh, a pace and a rhythm on your feet. That's what my whole thing was when I was competing. I wasn't a lockdown wrestler. I didn't wrestle with a lot of strength. Um, I developed a little single in high school. And you know, at some point you go, okay, a little single is just, just another move. But I like the principles that the little single did for me to make me an offensive wrestler, put me in a great stance for my head, I'm tanking with my head, and, and all those things. So um, I want to start with a warm up drill. I had the pleasure of going to Thailand in 2012, Coach Hattie was on that trip. And I sat and I watched the Iranians warm up. The Iranian junior team, they, they smashed too. They did very well with the kids performing at a high level. And I watched them do this jumping routine for 45 minutes. And then they started their warm-up. And it, it was really incredible. So we're going to do like two minutes of that as a group. So stand up. Stand up. Come on out of here. <laughs> OK, so just follow my lead. Come on out. Get closer to me. Get closer to me. OK, so start bouncing. You do what I do. OK? So we bounce in between. We bounce in between.
So I get into stance, and my stance in motion. When I'm square, I'm covering my legs and my head and chest. I really try to focus on, you know, I'm a John Smith uh, disciple, if you will. So I love, I don't think John's wrong about anything. And I know he focuses on really getting the pressure for his guys on the inside of your feet. I don't, when I see this position, I'm the one, I'm gonna eat this guy up. I see weight on your heels. I see your stance up here. I'm going, that's too easy. That's too easy. So I want the kids to cover their legs with their head and chest. My elbows are in. I look like a block. Like a block. There's no head to grab, there's no arms to grab. So I start moving. It's short steps in a circle. My center of gravity is right out here in front of me. I'm nice and relaxed all the time. So we'll go through a series of circle drills. So where you stand tall and circle. And they're developing rhythm. They're thinking, this is really a resting scene. I'm catching my breath. I'm studying my opponent's feet. Obviously, I'm not standing up for right close to each other. Then I'll say, break down. So they'll go from this position. Break down. Short steps. I'm visualizing my opponent in front of me. I'm taking, as if the guy's in the middle, I'm circling around him. I'm not going to pivot. Okay, it's not basketball. I'm going to circle around my opponent. Stand tall. Break down, change directions. Let's do that one time. Stand up. Okay, get your space, stand tall, ready, sir. Go. Move your feet, move your feet. Stand tall right now, stand tall, stand tall. Stand tall, nice and light on your feet. Okay, break down. Girls and 
skill. So we're learning how to move our feet. First one, I'll just go 20 seconds. I'll take you through like my favorite three. And all I'm doing is just do this right here. On the line, staying in a good stand. Don't let your arms go out like this. Don't come out of your stance. Right here. Nice and relaxed. Never mind. Don't move your feet so, so high. Shorter steps. Shorter steps. Push it to the front of my shoe. 
Papa, 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 papa. And that's all the like, papa, papa. And the kids start moving. And it's almost like they get numb. They get numb to it. And then you just strike them. Okay, so back to the front foot. We'll do a sprawl drill as we move down the mat. Because obviously, sprawling in defense is part of your motion. So when I'm moving, I'll say jab. Then I'll blow the whistle and you know, I'll sprawl. When I say sprawl, the front foot disappears. My, head, my hands go to the mat, my head stays up, right there. My leg is straight, my laces are flat, so if he did get up with me, I would slide, okay? My back foot's bent, sometimes we circle up, sometimes we pop up. When we pop up, it's more like I'm making for a reshot. I try to bring my leg through the hole in my chest. And I'm back up. Pull my hips straight to the mat. What most people do when they sprawl is this motion. They go up. There shouldn't be any up. They should all be down. Right? I meet it. So if you catch yourself doing this or going like this to sprawl, that's wrong. That's wrong. You need to fix that. So, things going down the mat. I pull my heel to my butt and my leg goes straight. My leg goes straight. My head and chest is up. I'm never here. I never go here. I want to be here so I can recover. Sometimes we circle up, so I have them square, square, square. Back to their feet and you're still resting. Okay? We'll do hand sprawls. And this is like our track start position where I'm just trying to get my hands to the man and block the guy with my hand. So I'm here. Both hands are going down. I'm moving my feet though. It's not just here. My feet go back, and I'm in this track position where I can run through the guy if I need to. Sometimes we do knee sprawls, where we just take it away. So if my opponent was to fake me from the outside, I go right here. But my head is up, and as he comes into me, he better be prepared for a shot from that position. I recognize how I bring my power leg back up. So we're here. I'm Coach Hagerty, where you at? So if he fakes on me, I want to keep my distance. My head is between me and him. Hey. See, he's walking right in. Okay. Well, I'm prepared to take another shot from that position. So, I come on, bring my foot up. I can sometimes shoot from here. Right? Or, more commonly, I'll go here, and as he walks in, I'm into my shot. If you're still pressing up your back foot, yeah, so shoot up both feet, girls. Shoot up both feet. And when you do these drills, when you work on using your front foot, and you work on using your back foot, then instinct takes over. Right? And then you're doing things as an athlete that the coach didn't teach. Because you got instinct now. And you're getting confidence and power from this position. So those are your those are my sprawls that I do. Hang on here for Oh. We went over stance and motion. So, the BC shuffle. I had a teammate of mine. I, uh, not a teammate, I coached this guy against Mauricio Wright. He's a two time national champion for San Francisco State coaching. He called this the BC, BC shuffle. So, I would play this game all the time. And it was like I'm a bullfighter. And I'm going, Toro, Toro, come get me. Come get me. So, as he brings his head right in my chest, just break, just break, don't shoot, just walk into me like this. Okay, so he comes in. And that's the game. And they want to grab me. So all this stuff makes it anxious. And he wants to put his hands on me. Now he feels safe. Now he can feel me. He feels comfortable. So I'll act like I want to tie up. He comes in. He sees jumping. Right there. Most of my double legs when I was competing, came with a guy like this. He's standing just like this, okay? If you can't score a double leg from that position, you'll probably choose another sport, right? So, the whole Toro thing, as he goes by, it's like I stab him, I stab him with a, with a dagger, just like a, a bullfighter would. Oh, there it is. Left there. Okay, coach, the lefty like me, so it makes it a little bit. A little more awkward. <laughs> you got another left. Even lefties don't like less than other lefties. <laughs>
<laughs> so, no, that's, I love that motion. And I'm playing a game with it. And I'm pairing it. Any questions about this stuff before I continue? Okay, so, the little single. Let's get into the little single a little bit. So, I love this shot. It's, a, it's an inside step penetration. And I really didn't even understand the difference. I was, I was a national champion at UNO in 1998. And I, and I did a clinic with Hardell Moore and this guy named Jimmy Aries from Oklahoma State. And I didn't know the difference between an outside step and an inside step. And I was already a national champion. I mean, it's, it, uh, it's important skill that you understand the difference. And it will make a difference in your thinking. As, as Coach talks about being your own best coach, learning what shot to take when. I can't take an outside step if, unless the guy's giving me pressure. So a lot of times, you're going to have to score from behind where the guy is backing away from you, okay? How are you going to take an outside step if he's moving backwards? He's waiting. He's waiting. i got to go get him. If I can't take an outside step from this position. It must be an inside step. So I, must, I need to be able to travel, okay? I need to be able to travel. So this little single, push on right for me. Okay? So when I take this little single, don't move right now, just, just drill it. I switch in my feet. I'm in a stagger stance. I want to change levels. And I say, low single, low. So my chest is touching my knee. But my head is up, and I'm firing off my both feet really, but my back foot is the trigger. And I want my knee to slide just in front of his knee, and I capture the end. Okay? So, right here. But my head is up, and this is the angle I'm looking for in his foot. This is perfect for me. My hand's past the foot, my head is up and in. I don't shoot my head through the hole. I don't try to finish with my neck. If I get here, I recoil. And I come back and I find it. My trail leg comes up. So, you know, anytime you're on two knees, they say you're in a bad position to rest, right? But if you pay close attention, I'm only, I'm not on two knees. I'm really still on one knee. So I hit the shot, boom, this leg comes up. And my body back away, coach. My body is in this cold position. And I bring, I cock my arm, and I capture the foot, and I'm ready to put the guy down. This is, to me, I love this position, okay? And this is not just for little guys. Because Travell Delagnif, Lif, Delagnif uh, has got probably the best little single on the national team. Okay? Uh, Kyle Schneider won the world championship versus a Russian with a little single. Okay? The move works. Okay? It works at a high level. So, um, love the little single. And what it does for you is, like I said, it puts you in this attack stance. On right in the face. Move him right here. Okay? So that's one inside step penetration. I can go the same shot for my double, which is what I did when I was competing in college. I took that same motion and I just shot higher. So a coach is square, and I really believe anytime this guy was in a square stance, I could take him down with a double. As soon as I, as soon as I recognize square, I can take a double. And it's that same motion. Maybe I do the BC shuffle, I get him to reach, I get him to reach, so that's say square. He reaches up, I drop. Okay, and this is the position I'm looking for. And when I hit, I'm not stepping. I should be very similar to the way Coach Stoke <coughs> is, where there's no, there's no step now. Okay, I'm not going to step into it. If I did this and I moved his arm out of the way, sure, I'd step. I got more time to step. I need to be as fast as possible. So as soon as I start this motion, he knows I'm coming. He's reacting. He's dropping his hands. He's dropping his hands. He's moving away from me. So I cock my body. Get ready. Right there. Okay, now. I'm looking through him. I'm half man. So my, I'm still, I'm not toe to toe with this guy like I would be for a low single. Okay? Low single, I'm trying to get as close to this foot as I can. I want to be right here. Double leg, I've cut him, I split him in half. I change levels, and I'm looking for my shoulder to make contact. I need to impact. Boom. Boom. Uh, a lot of times I'll shoot my hand past the, past the legs and get my hands. Once I get to this position, this is two. He's not getting out of this position. Okay. From here, I would single leg squat. This is getting into our lift. I'm going to go single leg squat. Pick him up, try to do him, blast him, whatever you want to do. Okay, we'll get into that single leg squat. Some more when we start talking high crotch. How's my time? What time is it? We are 10, 11 minutes left. So, back to the double again. I'm looking for him to reach. Reach and shoot. This is the same setup, you know, little kids use, where they do, do like this, guy looks over here, you shoot. Crack my hand over here, he shoots. Only difference is I'm staying in a great wrestling position, 
and I move and I reach, and you go tie up with me. Right there. See how he's almost falling over me? That's what I want. Boom. But I need to get, and coaches, such, such a great stance, I need to get here, here, tight, clamping. My elbows are tight. I don't come in like this. I punch my hands to get to the leg. So a lot of my speed comes from my hand speed, whether it be low single speed, whether it be double leg speed with my hand speed. Okay? Really important that you learn how to punch with your hands. Okay? If I was to go high crotch, okay, and this is uh, for you guys to go, man, it's going to take a long time for my kids to do that. Okay, that's true. It takes a while. Okay? I'll put in a slightly different system, whereas we make contact, and I call it a fast grab position. So my head, square for me, lefty. Okay, let me have it. You want right? Just, just stay square, right? Just stay square. So I'm here, tight, and I V-block. Now, I get into this head tie game, and coach starts to take the head position with me. I change levels, and there's my knee spin. So there's another type of penetration, okay? Um, coach, uh, uh, keep on asking team coach, Bruce, push for right. a calls it a knee spin. So that's where I developed that name, the knee spin. It's just this position, and I'll take a whole room full of kids and develop a knee spin in one day. So it starts like this, we'll go square. We'll go square, I don't need you right now. We'll go square, and then we'll step squat. Square, step squat. This hand is just to make sure they're low enough. Okay? It's not because this hand's going to be on the inside tie. But now for the drill, it's low. I like to teach the mechanics of the move. Once they get that, then everything else is easy. So I'm here, and we knee spin. And we get up again, step squat, knee spin. I want to get 180 degrees, so if I'm facing this direction, when I need to spin, I should be facing the opposite direction, okay? And that's a great shot that everybody can do, and it's not a space shot, even though I can hit it from space. I can come in from space and just come off the most square for me right now, and just come off his head and knee spin. I can go big drag this side, I big drag, he reacts, there's my knee spin, okay? Lots of different ways to get to it. Or the most common off the inside tie, almost like a narrow front leg, release the arm. I believe backside is best. I want to go backside best. If he squares on me, I'll come to my feet. Okay? High crotch from the same position. I got an inside tie. I got his position. Maybe I freeze it. Freeze! I'm not really trying to snap him to the ground. If he goes down great, I'll squish him there. Okay? But I want to freeze him. And I'm taking an inside step. I, get, I become part of this leg. Okay? Now I'm going to go outside arm, outside leg. Right there. And I'm deep. I'm deep. Okay? Now I, now I go back to my one legged squat. My single leg squat. Squat. Right there. Without a partner, you can penetrate. Boom. Outside arm, outside leg. Single leg squat. Get kids to do this combination and coordinate their body so they really understand. And then you put weight on them. Man, they develop it quick. They develop it quick and they're doing the right things. And their body's turning and they're getting the corner. This is the way most of us were taught to switch off on your high crotch. So you go high crotch, switch off. High crotch, switch off. Right? Would you agree? No, just that's that's that's, that's that's old school. That's old school. Now, the national team coaches want this. That's what they want. So they want. That's a better position. Okay? It's difficult, especially if you've been doing that for years. So, you got to work first, then you can teach the guys and the girls. Well, treat them like one time. Just get in. Sure. Without well, well, partner? With partner. With partner. So I hit my shot. Remember, I'm looking for shoulder impact. Okay? I don't want to go this way. Away from him. I don't want to pop the bubble. So if there's a bubble on his hip, my head is popping the bubble. Boom! Like that. Now I go single leg squat. Boom! 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 Run him down. I don't even need to switch off yet until I get the weight on the far leg. Great skill. Great drill. Questions? Questions? Yes.
great, great book. So, first of all, I don't know if I'd have the whole team do it. Right? I might take just a section of guys that are athletic, we're flexible. Doesn't necessarily mean lightweights, but just whoever's got the ability to change levels and get down there. I'd have those guys and do low singles with those guys. Okay? We spent a lot of time getting out too. Getting out. If I was gonna do a misdirection, low single. So just stand square. Okay? It's a lateral motion, but I'm gonna go make, 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 I'm showing, and then I'm gonna, and I'll make a noise. And get to the other side. Notice my knees change. So it's, my knee didn't go to the mat, other side. Okay? And, you know, with my really good low single guys, I'll have this little square. I know this come out with more practice than just right leg, low single. Left leg, low single. Right leg, low single. Left leg, low single. Then we'll start going misdirection to both sides. So they really get comfortable striking either foot. And I like that uh, vocabulary. You strike the foot. I don't shoot to the foot. I strike the foot. Big difference. Right? And we also have to be able to go, when he goes to me, I can get him to go down, he goes down to the mat, I cover him, I cover him, and then I go to my short offense. Okay, so a lot of time getting in and out, spend a ton of time on peak outs. Okay, so if his hands go, and these are the two that I really focus on, his hands come in front, we drag. His hands go over the top, we peak. Pretty simple. Right, so coaches in the kind of light chest lock. Drop to both knees. Okay, that's a light chest lock. So now my head is in the center. So if I start looking like this, he knows which way I'm going. He's going to step over me. I need to be somewhat deceptive. I might move this way, and then I will pull him off. Pull him off. There's my elbow without a partner. It looks like this. My back is straight. My hand stays underneath, so I can go back to the double. I don't bring my hands out this way. My hand in, so I can turn the corner and go through him. I'm not trying to go around him. I go through him. What most kids will do, and coaches, they'll do this because they lack the flexi they, they lack flexibility. And then they get stepped over. I can't recover from here. I can recover from here. If he tries to step over me, I go he tries to step over me, he's right in my double. I'm running that down. Okay, so my knee slides, I'm on my shin. Right there. Okay, and we need to be able to go both directions from this. Both directions. Short drag. If the hands come in front, <coughs> it's like me, he doesn't lock his hands on your front hand. Right? right, so, but most guys do. Most guys do. So when they go to lock their hands, see, I knew he was going to go left handed too. Go right hand. <laughs> go back to left hand. Go back to left hand. Go the other side. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I pull, first priority. Breathe. Breathe. You start backing out of this position. They're going to choke you, and you probably deserve to be choked. So you can't, you can't whip out of this position. I got to stay tough. I take it. I take the elbow to my chest. Relax a little bit. Just for teaching sake. Here, I'm going to dip my shoulder. Now he's already sliding off, and I pull him out. So this is different technique, right? This is not your conventional. Most people drag. They just try to rip it off. Okay, that hurts. That hurts. Plus, it's just not as efficient. It's pulling my ears, it's ripping my face, it really hurts. I kind of want to create some space. Some space. And then I pull, and I reach, watch my front leg, boom. And I get my leg to the far side. So, again, the technique is ear, breathe. Okay? I'm not going right away, I'm not showing. I did. I did. You feel that, coach? Boom. And I get back behind me. Get into my right. Okay. Other questions? Can you show your misdirection drill to both sides? Sure. So, you know, there's several different, mostly several, but there's a couple of different misdirections. There's not a ton of setups to low sync, right? It's mostly speed and timing and anticipation. So, my favorite, the one I started with in high school, was just fake here and go there. So it's like a cross step. Coach called it stepping in the box. We talked about this before, where I'll go. He reacts. I go to the far side, put him down. Okay, that's really old school favorite. The new school favorite is the knee change. And I really focus on, 
I spent some time with Pat Smith on this one. And uh, it, it, you know, we used to go to our knee. We used to go to our knee. Now we don't go to our knee. We stay off of our knee. And it's that much faster. So we're eliminating steps. We're eliminating steps. Okay, and it's not a, and even that was kind of wrong because I went forward with it. It really should be a lateral move. It should be. Right there. Head to the knee, cock your body, same finish on the other side. Okay. Got another great timing drill. Because the most thing is all about anticipation. Same with your doubles. Okay, so get in your mind to recognize when the foot's going to be there. And to be there when the foot gets there is huge. Right? So, coach was down on a little single stance. Just stand down and be ready to strike your little single. With your left leg. I'm like this. I'm dancing in front of my, my partner. And I'm going to go. And he's going to be there when the foot lands. All right, go. That was way late. Way late. Again. Wait, no, I'm going to get late for me. <laughs> <laughs> get for me to step. So, I'm avoiding right. So, I go. Put that foot down again. Don't go on your hip, like I don't like that hip stuff. That's... So I'll do it for me. High knees, just sort of do this, and then... Go ahead, whatever. Go faster than that. Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> now I'm going to be there when the foot gets there. I'm moving my feet. That was my retirement. Like, <laughs> so that's another great drill. I want the ones and guys to get comfortable with it. And they learn how to work together. High knees, you really see my feet. And, 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 and their timing gets incredible when you do this stuff. It's like, just like any skill you do, like, you gotta put time into it. You gotta believe in it. You gotta have commitment with this stuff. And then it works. It really does. It makes it changes everything with your wrestling. Bacon to the eggs. Say again? Bacon to the eggs, you gotta commit. Absolutely. <laughs> so if you're in on a little single, then you come in over top of the top. Okay, so it's not a little single clinic, but we'll get into this. Ja, so I get in and you guys get into the crotch. here? Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna go right here and he's on his back. He's on his back. So I do a lot of hip ice. Okay, I really believe in hip ice. And for mat wrestling, for scramble wrestling, a lot of our finishes are hip ice type things. And there's several different types of hip ice, right? So there's a there's like an escape off the bottom hip ice. Flip, I step out, flip. Okay, and there's just a power hip ice. Just learning how to pull some power. And then my finishes, lots of my finishes come. A man, he drinks over. Okay, either way, I see that foot, I take that foot away. I take that foot away. If he can post up on that foot, now he can start to lift my body and stuff, and no good. Right, so he drops the chest, take the foot away. Now I put him on his back, but I'm pushing. I don't just turn, I actually take the foot up and I push back with my body into him. And then I'm in a hip pass. Okay, one more time. Okay, if it's a horse, he blocks, rolls me through, 360, shake him off, drop your hips, all that good stuff. Okay, questions? Uh, two minutes left, we get the questions. Like a lot of uh, hand stuff too, right? So it's not just faking from outside. We want to be physical with our hands. I can grab him, actually. I can grab him, pull him out, I can try to get him to do this. Okay, I can post his head. You know, a lot of coaches talk about range, getting the range. Most of these kids will shoot from too far away, you know, when they're first learning the shot. You want to be close. It's like if we're boxing, we talked a lot about boxing this weekend. If we're going to box, I go one, two, move. One, two, move. One, two. I wouldn't go one, two. Right? And I can't hit him. So I got to stay close enough to hit him. So. Carry him with my hands, you know, lots of the Jordan Burrow stuff where you're moving the guy and moving your feet. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Don't share this one with anybody. Okay. So, uh, I'll pull, I'll pay, pay. I start posting his head. Notice what we did, knew what I wanted right there. 
especially if he's a right leg leader, which Coach is not, but most guys are. I keep my post hand down, my other hand down, I post his hand. He went up and grabbed my ribs. This is natural. That's natural. Take it off. Okay. I'll do it again. Thank you. It's too easy. You can take guys down three or four times and they still don't know how you got to their leg. What are you doing? How you getting in there so fast? It's really not that fast. It's just most position, disguising. Head up. I hit, I back out, I score. Okay? If he goes over the top, just put your hands on the mat behind me. I might come up with Iranian, old school Iranian. Right? I really don't do this one as much anymore because with all the scrambling, you know, I like for people to come up on me like that because I'm trying to knock them down. But when I come up again, my position when I come up is to slide. I don't just come up, I come up and I slide with big chest and I want to put pressure on that foot. I really want to be mean, I'll pull a foot to my chest. So I'm in, stand over, no, I slide. I want to straighten that leg. Okay? Now he's he's in a lot worse position. I mean, if he was here and it plates on me, ah! Heavy. I don't want to feel that weight. I hate weight. One more time. So I'm up, I'm under, I slide. Now I can come around. Easy. Easy points. Okay, just to show you what I'm talking about from the scramble position. Take a folk style now. He gets in, come up by Iranian. Okay, as soon as he comes up like this, I want to try to kick him down to the back. And I'll just take my leg and swing it, kick him in his chest, and pull him down. And now we're in another scramble. And he's probably not in that position too many times. He'll raise like this. So, creating scenarios where you know what you're doing and they don't. I've been in there way more than you have. I'm probably going to go for that. Other questions? Okay, thanks man, I appreciate that.